Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm talking about the the omnipresent problem that I think all artists go through, whether we feel like we've achieved something at the moment, it pretty much always comes back to bite us and that's that style, that's direction for our artwork and where we want to go with it. So so yeah, today I want to talk a bit about art style and how to be a little bit more self-analytical to make sure that you're going in the right path, specifically learning from the mistakes that you've made and go going down the wrong path. That is something that I uh, just kind of realized I've been doing for a while now. I've been going down the wrong path. And honestly, it's a, it's it's still very exciting to to realize that there's something that I know that I can fix and I can go back to and it's concrete and it may take a while, but but having an action plan is so much more empowering than just feeling lost and not knowing what direction to go, but knowing that you're not happy where you're at. And that's how I felt for honestly a, a while now, probably a good six months or more. And I, I know that that's something that I've felt a lot in the past too, where I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just didn't know I just didn't know. I didn't know what I needed to put into my work to be happy with it. So, so anyways, I want to talk a bit about, about that, about things that I've learned, things that might help you, little practices. So just jumping right in, the first thing that's, that's really important is being critical of your own work and not in a bad way, but just being aware of, of what is in your work that you love and you think stylistically is where you want to go and what things are there that you don't love and you want to cut out or find a way to replace with something better. This actually is something that I used to be a lot more diligent with after every single piece that I finished, I would look at it and think it through and take mental notes of what things I liked and what things I'd work on next and what things I would just completely scrap. And it, uh, it dawned on me after I finished one of my last pieces that I just haven't done that in in ages, probably about at least six months, I feel like, where I, I'll finish a piece and then I just feel unhappy with it, but because I'm not looking at it and thinking about an actual action plan and my path that I wanna go, I just ended up feeling discouraged by it or frustrated by that piece not being this amazing stylistic beacon in my work and then it just felt like I was lost because I didn't have a path. I didn't have a plan and having a plan, even when it's just on short term from one piece to the next, it is so night and day compared to not having a plan when it comes to your style and figuring out how you want your work to actually look like. So I like to have a little checklist, at least I used to, I'm going to try to get back into the habit of it now when I finish a piece where I can look at it and take a few key points and analyze whether it's there in my piece present or not. And some of those things are, I, I want my pieces to have a certain feeling or emotion to it or storytelling aspect to it. And if the piece doesn't have that, then it's not in the right path. It wasn't guiding me the right way. So that means that if I keep going down that path, if I keep making pieces like that, then I'm gonna end up in a completely different place. Like if you're walking down a road and there's a split, you can choose to stay on that straight path or you can turn. And that I think is is one thing that I, I need to be a little bit better at is that I forgot to make sure that I wasn't going down the wrong path. I needed to make sure I was going down the right path. So, so anyways, that's one thing that's really important to me is the mood, the atmosphere, the storytelling as well as the, the stylistic things, such as how I drew the eye or how I executed it so that it has the, the the execution that I wanted. And it's kind of just, just as easy as that. After every single piece, if you're looking at it and picking it apart and seeing what's there, what isn't there that you want it to be or things that you put in that you don't like, and you have that. And honestly, if you're having a hard time remembering it or staying on top of it, it might be a good idea just to get a little journal and write it down after each piece, your, your final thoughts on it. I find that when I'm more aware of things like that after the piece, I'm also much more aware of it before I start to, which is also not a bad idea to sit down before you even start on a piece. If you have the sketch or you have an idea, sit down and make sure that it has those things in it that you really want to portray in your artwork. And then you're just starting off right off the bat in the right direction. So for me, I, a while back, and probably some of you remember this, I 
I decided that the line work that I was doing was just too stagnant for me. And I wanted to try doing something that felt a little bit more alive. It was, it was a critique that I had on my work that I wanted to figure out if I could do a better, a better method for it so that it could look the way I wanted. So that was part of the process where I, I noticed something that I was feeling unhappy with in my work and I had a plan to follow through with it. Now, the problem that I ran into was that I went down that path, but I went down it for so long without being critical of where it was taking me that it was now kind of this point in time before I realized that that path led me down the wrong direction. It took me to a place that, that I actually don't want my art to look like. So, so very specifically for my own work, just so there's an example. So like I said, with my line work, I decided that I wanted to try doing something that, that felt a little bit more immersed in the painting process, was a little bit more colored and less black and white and less with the microns because they were really limiting in their color palette. So I decided to try a lot of different methods. I went through a lot of different experimentations where I would try doing it with colored pencil or inking it with actual India inks or doing it in the actual watercolors. And ultimately, if, if one of those really felt right and it was perfect for where I wanted to go, that would have been good. But I never took a moment to really analyze whether it was or wasn't. And at the end of the day, it really wasn't because I personally wasn't satisfied with the results and it didn't feel like I would be able to get to where I wanted to be. So I, I actually really do love very sharp, crisp line work where it's clean and I can execute it exactly the way I want. I can control it. But when it came time to executing it in these other methods, even with more skill, there were, there were issues if I was doing it in watercolors that I would eventually always come up to it with another wash and then it would eat away at it and it would just not be as crisp. It just was part of the process. It was never as crisp. And because I never took that moment after each painting to think about, is this something that's, that's going to make my art what I want it to look like, or is it taking it away? I, I went down that path for so long and I've been unhappy with my work for so long. And it was kind of this epiphany where it hit me that, that I haven't been like really happy, happy with a piece of work since, since when I was doing this kind of line work. And, um, and I don't mean to say this in like a discouraging way to not experiment and try new things because I am really happy that I tried these different methods and tested them to see if they would work for me. Because if they felt right and if they had worked for me, then it would have been absolutely the right path for me to test that out. But what really should have happened is I should have been a little bit more analytical of that much earlier on in the process so I could have course corrected. <laughs> And I know it can be really hard to know if what you think you might want to do is in the end the right choice. Like for me, with some of those inking methods that I tested out, if I had the skill that some of these amazing artists had, it maybe could have had the effect that I wanted. But the way to, to test that out is really to go and look at other artists and see how they're executing that kind of a method or that kind of style choice and see if even at the, the top level of, of skill or even a couple levels, if you can find a lot of different artists that are executing it in a certain way, you can see if that end result is going to be something that feels right for you with, with that special combination of all the different aspects that make up your own personal style. But if, if you can see that and you can see that being something that you want your work to look like, at least in that specific aspect, then that can be really helpful. For me, when I, when that hit me, that I was like going down the wrong path, I went back and I decided to look at artists that were executing these really crisp, sharp lines in a way, in a painting that I found really appealing. And that was really reaffirming because while it's certainly, I don't want it to be just like someone else's work, it is really helpful to know that, that it can be something that I want it to be in, in the downstream, as I go down this path, eventually I can get it to something that, that I feel really happy with. And I think it looks as professional as I want it to be and all those aspects. 
I, I find that really comforting to have seen it in action in some form that ends up looking the way that I want it to. So that helps me to say, okay, yeah, I love doing it. It feels really good to work on these really crisp lines. I love the outcome that I can get right now. I'm much happier with that. And I, I love the direction that it can be way in the future where when I build up my skills and I build up my other skills that support this kind of a choice, then the outcome will be something that I'm also very happy with. So, so it is really important to kind of look at your, your past, your present, and your, your future state of, of art skills and artistic choices because you can go to the past and see what things you've tried that you might have completely forgotten about, like me, or things that you wish you could bring back into your work. And then you can look at your own work now and see if it represents that, if it's grown, if it's taken you where you want it to go. And then you can see in the future, hopefully, you can make a plan on if that's the trajectory that you want, if that's the line or the path that you want to go down. And I will be finishing up painting her in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned if you'd like to see how she ends up finished and everything. I'm, I'm really excited about painting her, actually. So, uh, And also, if you would like to see the original sketch from the very beginning concept to the nice finalized sketch that I work off of, I do have a video of that and a timeline over on my Patreon. That's for the $5 tier and up. So if you'd like to go check that out, there is a link in the description that'll take you over there. And I do want to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon because you guys help me to be able to actually make art and make these videos. So thank you guys so much. I do have a link to my art shop as well. If you'd like to own any originals or prints or stickers or anything else, that's all listed down below. But I think that's about it for today. So I will see you guys next week with some more art video content. So I'll see you then.